How's it going guys? Coach Javi here. Today we are back with the Train Yourself series. This episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to try something new. Instead of me just putting a little bit of music in the background and some uh, text descriptions, what we're actually going to do is I'm going to do a little voiceover and kind of just walk you through the entire session, give you some tips that way, and then we'll see if you guys like that. We'll see if it works out. And if it does, then we'll do it again in the future videos. And if you guys don't like it, then we'll go back to the old way of doing things. Today's session is gonna be about injury recovery. I got some training equipment here that I'm about to set up. The biggest thing for this session is that just because you're injured, that doesn't mean that you cannot train. I think a lot of people get injured, so they just stay at home, they don't do anything, and then by the time they're healthy again, because they've been sitting down and because they've been off their feet and they haven't been training, obviously they're at a higher risk to get injured again. So if you guys get injured, make sure you slowly get back out there. You slowly start working on some things. Try to make sure that your recovery goes as smoothly as possible, that you're doing your rehab exercises, and it's gonna feel a lot better when you get back into training, but also it might actually help you recover a little bit faster. So let's get straight into it. We're gonna get straight into it. Uh, setting up some of the equipment here. I got a speed ladder, I got a foam roller, two balance discs, uh, soccer balls and some cones. I'll leave the link in the description to all these products that you can go ahead and buy if you want. We're going to start off with the balance disc. What I like about injury recovery is that it helps you focus on certain things that maybe you wouldn't have focused on otherwise if you weren't injured, just because you're limited in your range of movement and the intensity of a session. So we're going to start off with just some balance and some proprioception training, which is basically your body's aware awareness to the movement. Um, and to your body's positioning basically. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with some basic balance exercises, some single leg squats, and pretty quickly you'll be able to tell how good your balance is. So once you step on these, you'll be able to see whether you favor a certain foot um, and how easy or how difficult it is for you. And obviously it's very, very important aspect of the game. So if you can work on your balance even as a warm up, as a cool down, and especially for injury recovery sessions. Um, what we're focusing on a lot is basically teaching your body to understand how it moves, balance itself properly so that when you do things like jump up for a header, um, jump over a slide tackle, your body naturally knows how to correct itself uh, when it lands. We'll go into some figure eights. Very nice and slow, very controlled movement, trying to stay upright. Moving the ball very slowly and just working on that balance. You can see me making these little minor adjustments with my foot to try to keep that balance. For all of these exercises, you're going to do about two or three sets. Try to go about 30 seconds on, on each foot per set. It's going to strengthen all of your leg muscles, your hamstrings, your calves, your quads, um, and really help with the balance aspect of, uh, of the game. We're going to go into some uh, single leg standing uh, ball movement variations. So basically it's very simple. We're just going to start with, you know, either your left or your right foot. I want you to balance the entire time. And then with the other foot, use different parts to move the ball around um, basically in like a square like motion. So as you can see, I'm just using the inside of the foot. I'm using, you know, the outside of the foot, the laces, and even, you know, the bottom of my foot to get that ball moving around while I focus on my balance with the other leg. And, um, even though you're very limited in your movement, especially coming back from injury, I think this is a good way to get, you know, a variation of touches on the ball. Um, you'll see me kind of mess up a little bit or lose my balance, which is okay. Just get right back into it. Again, another 30 to 45 seconds of doing this before you switch on to the other leg. I'm not trying to go too fast. I'm working at a good pace, nice and slow, so that I can work on the balance. Afterwards, we're going to go into some very light juggling. I'm still using that balance on that one foot and then using the other foot, basically just the toes to keep that ball right underneath my uh, knee. And this is going to be hard because as the longer you, the longer you're standing, the harder it is going to be to balance yourself, especially when the ball's moving up and down. And if you're struggling with one foot more than you are with the other, practice a little bit more with that foot. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit more with my left foot. It's a little bit harder for me to keep the ball up in the air and to balance on that right foot. So I'm going to do a little bit more um, on this side and get a few more reps on, on the left foot. After that, we're going to go into some just some regular juggles, a little bit higher than the knees, but still below the chest area. Just using the front part of the foot, give the ball a little bit of backspin and uh, just stretch my legs out a little bit more. 
After the juggles, we're going to go into some more balance work. We're just going to be standing on one foot and then with the other foot, find a wall, a rebound or anything that that'll give you the ball back. If you have a partner, that'll be great. Otherwise, just find find a wall. And all you're going to do is just pass the ball back and forth while you balance on that one leg. So nice and controlled. We stopped the ball completely before every single time that we hit it back against the wall. But um, just making sure that that ball goes nice and firm. Try try not to have it bounce on the ground. Everything should be on the ground right back to your foot using the inside of the foot to control it and to also pass it back. So we're just basically what we're doing with all these exercises is we're finding creative ways for us to still get some touches on the ball but eliminating a lot of the movement. So now we're going to combine a few of the exercises. We're going to stay balancing on that one leg. We're going to do that movement where we use different parts of our foot to get it all the way around. But then when it comes back around, we're going to just incorporate a nice and simple pass with the inside of the foot back against the wall. You can do this one for reps. You can do this one for time. I think I did it for maybe about a minute and then I switched, uh, switched feet and then uh, I did about two or three sets of that. We're going to incorporate a little bit more movement. Now we're going to not use the ball in this one. We're going to use the speed ladder. And we're just going to do kind of like the icky shuffle, except when you get to the outside and you plant on that outside foot, I want you to catch your balance completely and then go back to the other side. So we're not going too fast. We're taking about maybe a second or two seconds in between, completely shifting our entire weight of the body over to that one leg and then finding the balance before we move on over to the other side. Um, quick little feet in the middle. And as you can see, I'm moving my arms up and down as I move my feet in between the ladder just to get you know some of the coordination between my arms and my feet. It's going to help you in your running motion. It's going to help you with your balance as well. And like I said, this is not meant to be fast. It's just meant to uh, work on that balance, shift your feet a little bit, and then uh, you know get back onto the other side quickly. Explode off of that outside foot. So if you want to make it a little bit more difficult, do it backwards. So that's what I'm doing in this one here. I'm uh, shifting that, that weight over and on that standing leg, the one that I'm balancing on, I'm using that same leg to kind of explode off of, to the other side, back into the ladder. Uh, again, moving my arms and then just doing it at a nice controlled pace to where I'm not, you know, putting myself at further risk for injury, but I'm working on, you know, the proper movements. This exercise, I kind of just tested out to see how much movement I could do without, you know, feeling a little bit of pain. Um, very, very simple, just dribbling across diagonally to the different cones. As I move further down the cones, they get a little bit closer together so that I'm working on some more controlled movements. And here I'm going at a pace in which I can I can see, you know, how my legs feel, whether I'm, I'm straining the injury any further, and I'm just, you know, working on different parts of my foot. As you can see, I'm using both feet every single time. I'm going outside of the, outside of the left foot, uh, inside of the left foot, outside of the right foot, inside of the right foot, just using different parts, nice and controlled. I'm trying not to touch the cones at all, but I'm focused on just making simple, simple movements, keeping the ball nice and close to my feet and not trying to strain myself for, uh, for further injury or putting myself at risk. Um, and then we're just going to end the session with a nice little uh, foam roll. So this was meant to be a very, very simple session, very little movement, low intensity. And all we're focusing on is just, you know, some balance, some proprioception training, the idea is we do this and then next session we can push it a little bit further. The session after that we can push it a little bit further, but we're not really doing anything to an intensity where it's going to further further your risk of injury. Instead, we're just kind of slowly building back up so that, you know, when the injury goes away and you're fully healed, that, you, you know, your body's ready. You've been stretching, you've been working, you haven't just been uh, sitting at home doing nothing. So hope you guys like the session. All right, so that's it for today. Again, if you are injured, make sure that you're still trying to do something so that when you come back from injury and you're fully healthy, your body hasn't been just sitting around not doing anything. So it's important to get even just a little bit of injury recovery training in. And as you guys could see from today's session, there was barely any movement whatsoever. Most of it was just focused on some balance stuff and then a few touches on the ball. So it's just a good way to make sure that when you guys are fully healthy, you don't feel like you've been missing out for too long. Obviously, Play it safe, depending on your injury, you know, don't force it. Don't put yourself at a risk for another injury. Just make sure you take it light, 
get a few touches on the ball and you should be good if you guys like this episode of the train yourself series make sure you guys hit that like button if you guys are new here make sure you guys subscribe because coach javi is getting very very close to that 100k and uh, again just leave your topics in the comment section down below for what you want to see next as part of the train yourself series or just any feedback you guys have in general that's it for today until next time and adios muchachos